So my next guest is an Israeli academic whose best-selling books like Sapiens explore the human condition from the dawn of history to today. So his take on the current conflict is worth hearing. He says as well as winning the military war, Israel needs to win the war of his own humanity by treating Palestinians with dignity and providing them with a future. I sat down with Yuval Noah Harari to find out more. Well, I'm joined now by Yuval Noah Harari. Yuval, thank you very much indeed for joining me. I wanted to start on a personal note. I understand that you had family members uh, at the kibbutz when these horrors were unfurling on October the 7th. Uh, how are they? And tell me about what they experienced. Well, my, my aunt and uncle live in Kibbutz Be'eri, which is one of the communities that was attacked and occupied by the Hamas terrorists. Uh, my aunt and uncle, who are, he's 100 years old and my aunt is 90 years old, they hid in their house as terrorists went systematically from house to house in their kibbutz and tortured and executed and murdered people, their neighbors and friends, in the most horrific ways. Uh, they somehow survived, and they and tens of thousands of other Israelis from the border region are now refugees inside in, in Israel. I mean, a horrific experience, as so many experienced on that day. I've been debating on this show ever since about what constitutes a proportional response by Israel. Mm. I'm sure that you've wrestled with that too. What have you concluded? What is the correct response here for Israel to retaliate or exact revenge or just to defend themselves, however you want to categorize it? What is the best way mm. for Israel to do this? We need to look to the future. And in the present circumstances, this means that uh, on the one hand, Israel must defend its uh, citizens and must disarm Hamas and end the Hamas control of the Gaza Strip, not just th so that my family and tens of thousands of other Israelis could go back to living next to the Gaza Strip, but also Hamas is intentionally destroying any chance for future peace you know, the reason this attack was launched now, the reason for the timing of the attack, was that Israel was very close to signing a historical peace treaty mm. with Saudi Arabia, uh, which was supposed not just to normalize relations between Israel and the Arab world, but also to restart the Israeli-Palestinian peace process and to include concessions that will alleviate the suffering of millions of Palestinians in the occupied territories. And the aim of Hamas was to foil this peace treaty. Even those interested in peace must be in favor of disarming Hamas. At the same time, Israel should remain committed to international law and to the future chances for peace. There will not be a uh, 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 peace just by disarming Hamas. We also need to give a future to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank so that they can live dignified lives in their homeland. But how do you dismantle or eradicate Hamas, given they're a terror group that live amongst the civilian population? We know this. If, yes. And if you need the population to come with you on this process of removing Hamas, Surely what is going on at the moment is having the opposite effect. If thousands and thousands of Palestinian civilians who had nothing to do with it are being slaughtered yes. um, on a daily basis, it seems, and if that escalates through a ground invasion, then surely it will have the opposite effect, won't it? I mean, you may well end up dismantling mm -hmm. a lot of Hamas terrorists, but if you also kill tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of civilians, you are surely going to alienate those people from wanting any form of deal with anybody after this. Absolutely, and this is why Israel should be very careful about the way it operates. Uh, Israel is not a terrorist organization like Hamas. It is not aiming to kill as many civilians as possible. Uh, it is very difficult, of course, to fight a terrorist organization which is hiding inside a civilian population. Ideally, uh, there should be a way for civilians to move out of the combat zones uh, Egypt, that shares a border with the Gaza Strip, uh, should be willing to accept Palestinian civilians for the duration of, of the war in order to protect them. I would say that even Israel 
should explore the possibility of receiving at least women and children from the Gaza Strip into Israeli territory, you know, maybe allow the Red Cross or some other international organization to build temporary safe havens for Gazan civilians on Israeli soil for the duration of, of, of the conflict. If Israel wins the war against Hamas without providing for an alternative future for the Palestinian civilian population, we will only get something even worse than Hamas a few years down the line. You're a historian, as you said earlier. This has been going on now for over 70 years, this conflict. Yeah. It flares up um, every few years, it seems, with some new form of, of hideous warfare. Uh, when you chart back to the very start of all this, which many people are trying to do to try to explain mm. how we've reached this place, was the big mistake in the first place the displacement of several hundred thousand Palestinians? People, for instance, talk a lot these days and, and for many years and for good reasons about the suffering of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who lost their homes in 1948. Mm. Few people know that as a result of the 1948 war, also hundreds of thousands of Jews lost their homes in retaliation for the war. Uh, Jewish communities all over the Middle East, in Arab countries, in Egypt, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, who lived there for hundreds, sometimes thousands of years and had nothing to do with the war, they were driven out. Mm. Hundreds of thousands of Jews, the largest group of people now living in Israel are Jews that were expelled as refugees as a result of the 1948 war. Now, does this justify what happened to the Palestinians? No. Does this justify the Israeli occupation and the mistreatment of Palestinians there? Absolutely not. And we shouldn't use historical injuries to justify more injuries. If you have to choose between justice and peace, choose peace. Every peace treaty in the history of the world was based on compromise. No, we need some level of justice, of course, but there is never a possibility of absolute justice. If you pursue absolute justice, you will only perpetuate war indefinitely. Most people believe there can be no peace deal with Hamas, given the appalling uh, terror attacks of October the 7th. Mm -hmm. But many people also feel, including many Israelis I've talked to, uh, believe there can't be any peace deal as long as Bibi Netanyahu remains in charge of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, do you yeah. share that view? Do you think that, uh, that on, well, for many reasons, one, his attack earlier in the year on the judiciary, on the integrity of the Supreme Court, the social unrest that caused, mm -hmm. the division in Israel, perhaps yeah. even distracted his defence and intelligence uh, people away from, uh, from what they should have been doing, which may have contributed to mm -hmm. the way Hamas was able to execute this attack. Uh, for all these reasons, do you think it would be prudent for Israel to find new leadership? Absolutely. I mean, Netanyahu has been ruling Israel for most of the last 14 years. He has based his political career on dividing the nation against itself. He has weakened any state institution, including the security forces, that might challenge or limit his authority, as he recently tried to do to the courts and especially to the Supreme Court. And this is the deep cause of the dysfunction of many governmental systems, not only on the day of the attack, but in, in, uh, ever since then. If Netanyahu really cared about the state of Israel, he should have just taken responsibility for the disaster and resigned mm. and allowed the Israeli people to come together at this very difficult time. Alternatively, if he thinks he's the only one that can manage this uh, uh, crisis, then he should have said, OK, I'm calling an election in six months, and then I will resign and, and, and take responsibility for, for what has happened. Mm.